I would never let anything happen to you, Sugar Bear. Oh, hi. Okay. So, welcome to Synapse Shorts, a series of quick one to two minute videos on Synapse Analytics. So this might be a slightly longer one, but it's one that kind of I've been meaning to do for a long time and one lots of people ask me about. So, um, how do we auto shut down a data warehouse? An auto scale, an auto start. So that's what we're going to cover now. All right. So there's, I'm going to carry on from where I left off. This is my SQL pool that I created. So I'm just going to resume it. So it's starting to run. Now, there are multiple ways of doing the auto shutdown, auto start, and auto scale. Now, you can use Azure Automation, which is the way I'm going to show you. You can use the web API called from uh, Azure Data Factory or from a DevOps pipeline. And there is a way of doing it in, I say Power Apps, but I don't think it's Power Apps. But anything that can call a web API that can call um, some PowerShell can do it. So this is just a way that I have running on my data warehouse. Um, and I have it in my dev one. So every, every two hours, it just automatically shuts down. So it just saves costs. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this site here, this GitHub repo. So this is where the scripts live. So you can normally find this just by Googling with Bing, um, GitHub, um, Azure DW samples. So obviously it does need to be updated for the Synapse world. But the bit that we're interested in, in so this is really useful and I'll do a video just on, on, on this stuff. Um, but just for this video, we'll go into samples. We'll go into automation and then here are the scripts we're interested in. So there's a resume or start. There is a scale, so changing the size and suspend. So the ones that we're interested in is suspend and pause right now. So, so and here is there's some information. There's also a blog post here which we can look at. Um, I found it took me a little while to get this going. Um, so this is why I kind of I, I talk through this a lot with customers and, and with with colleagues. So the first thing we need to do to get this working, we need to create an automation account. So we just go into Azure, we create a, an automation account. And this is quite a high privileged account. So close that down, create, and I'll just call this uh, my Azure Automation. I'll give it a new res group. We'll call this Auto. And then we need this run as account. That's the important bit. Okay, create. And literally that's it for creating the automation account. When it's there, it will just appear in here. And then we need to create a job. There we go. Fabulous. All right. All right. The bit that catches everyone out is as well as creating the actual job that we need to run, the run book, they're called. We also have to create a, a SQL credential. Now, the reason we're doing this is that these scripts are actually quite clever. So we'll just very, very quickly, because obviously not a lot of people are going to be okay with the PowerShell, is that down here, it actually runs the command to do the, where is the command to do the change? The, so there is a command to pause it, suspend or pause it. We can see all this script here. It actually logs into the data warehouse and then checks for any running jobs. So if there's any running jobs running, anything running, it won't pause it, it will just retry later. 
So it's quite a clever script. So you can have this running, and if some people are still using the data warehouse, so if you have it to automatically shut down at 6 p.m., for example, and people are still using the data warehouse running some scripts, it won't just pause the data warehouse and kill those running jobs. So that's one of the reasons why I quite like this. All right. But to be able to log into the data warehouse, it needs an account. So this is the bit that normally catches people out. So we're going to create a credential. Um, add. And we'll call this DW cred. And the username is the username to log into the data. Great. So that's my credential. As soon as I remember what that was called, DW cred, I can go into run books and then create a run book. So the run book name has to be, it's basically the name, this name here. So for ease of use, I just, we could call it something else, but for ease of use, I just copy this one. Right, run book there. And it's of type PowerShell workflow. Um, to auto stop DW and we're going here click on raw just try A control C nothing clever and I'm just gonna paste it in here and that's it that is all I need to do now to actually execute it, I'm going to hit start and then at the top of the script, it asks you for all these parameter names. Now, if you've done exactly as I have and you haven't changed or done anything, you just created the run as account, this you can leave blank or you can put this in here. This SQL action name is the credential name. Now, this is where I think people get stuck. I know I got stuck before. So and this is the server name. Now, I'm slightly cheating because I've already got this in a notebook and I've already got it at the side and I'm going to and I'm cutting and pasting it in. So the first thing I do is then just test it out. Have I done everything right? And then this normally takes a few minutes for it to actually kick in and work. And there's our output. And we can see that now it is paused. And if we click on our go back to our data warehouse honestly I'm actually quite surprised how it worked first time to show you how easy that is so if we now go back to our data warehouse so well that looked like it worked okay great so we'll go back to the run book and then what I will do is I will now link to a schedule so I'll then link to a schedule in my run book. I need to create a schedule and I'll call this um, every hour, um, run every hour. And it starts here, runs here, it's a recurring, it'll run every hour. So we now have a schedule and then we then kick off this on that schedule. And it's that easy. It took a couple of minutes to set up obviously we can then use a script multiple times for multiple machines multiple servers so I put that in the wrong place thanks So if you're having trouble with it, it's normally the credential that's wrong. 
um, and you're putting in a username or the you put something in as the run as connection. Um, okay. Now that will be an automated schedule job that will run every hour, shutting down my data warehouse and saving me money. And the other scripts in here. You set them up in an identical way. So we want to start it, shut the server down at a particular time, start it another time, or maybe we want to scale it from a 100 to a 500 to a 3000 at a particular time today to do different processing. It's all here. Great. Well, thank you for your time. Thank mm -hmm. you.